want to get excited for Jesus. Is that okay? I want to stir, we want, we all want to stir you up. Is that all right? Can we stir each other up today? Let's stand and let's give him all that we have in our hearts. Come on. I can see the clouds rolling. I can feel the winds, they try to shake me. Feel the waters rise. I can hear the howling lies that haunt me. Fear won't hold me now. My feet are on the rock. When I feel my hope about to break, I will cling to your unchanging grace. Let the waters rise.
a glorious day, what a glorious way that you Aren't you glad that from the moment that you met our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that your life has forever been changed? To those of us that said, yes, Lord, we are yours. And you know, sometimes it's not always easy. But the path that he walked when he was on this earth wasn't easy either, was it? But he trusted in his heavenly Father. And he set the tone for each and every one of us. But we were not left orphans. He left us his Holy Spirit to guide us and to, to walk us through each moment in life. You know, our, as we set this year, we, we set out to maybe make goals. Some call them resolutions, things that you want to accomplish for this next year. Let's do ourselves a favor and let's collectively make sure that whatever goal we set, make sure that we have our foundation set in the right place. Amen. On our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the cornerstone.
trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in Him be found, dressed in His righteousness alone. For us to stand.
hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. Come on, church. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome. Come on. We sing hallelujah. Crossroad, this is Pastor Rick, and I'm here with Pastor Jim, and we're just going to share a little bit of information today of the, from the scriptures and things that are on our hearts, but wanted to encourage you again that uh, this will soon be over and we'll be back together worshiping. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too. If absence makes the heart grow fonder, then it truly is working in my heart. And I believe that's working in your heart also. I don't know if you caught the uh, service on WBOC, but we were really blessed to have them give us an opportunity to be one of the, the three churches that were able to share a message there. And this is an example, again, of God taking something that's not good and turning it for something good. Uh, we, uh, I don't have a clue how many people we, we reached that weekend but surely it was more than we could have ever done in the, the things that normally happen here. So we're, we're thanking God for that. And uh, I hope you caught our Easter message where all three pastors, uh, Pastor Jim and Pastor Andrew, got to share with me. And uh, I wanted to kind of take off on that with you, Pastor Jim, with what you shared uh, there at the end about that even though church is wonderful to be able to come together to encourage and strengthen and and really the Bible says that that we would uh, not fall into sin. That's part of why we come together to be strengthened that way. But that we shouldn't uh, be so dependent on that alone uh, because our relationship with God personally is the number one important thing that's really going on. And I thought you hit that pretty well this past week. And so uh, I thought we'd pick it up from there with sharing on something like that uh, with a few things that you had shared with me this week. Yeah. Well, thanks, Pastor Rick. And I'm really excited about doing this with you. I love the conversations we have together just talking about the Lord. And I always felt, boy, if people could just listen to, to us talk, they would be so blessed and encouraged as we start talking about the Lord. And, and hello, Crossroad family. And last week I did talk about um, Paul and how he addressed the Corinthian church and how in his absence, uh, they, many of them uh, anyway, struggled to live righteously. And Paul told them in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, he says, examine yourselves. He told them to examine themselves, to test themselves, to see, it says to see whether they are even in the faith and um, that, that Jesus was even in them. So in this time, it's a great time for us to examine ourselves and, and to, to test ourselves in the, this time of trial with the virus and everything and how it's affecting our lives. 
especially with the closing of the church? You know, how are we responding as Christians? Are we falling away from God or are we drawing closer to God? Sometimes our faith, even without realizing it, becomes rooted in the church, in the the gathering together, you know, the writer of Hebrews tells us not to forsake, and our spiritual life is determined by what we receive from the church. So we're really only as strong as the church. If our faith is rooted in Jesus Christ, as it should be, our, our spiritual life will come from Him. And when, it, when we come to the gathering together, we make it stronger. And God really wants and needs a strong church. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says, And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, well, that's all of us now, but exhorting one another. And hear this, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Well, the day is approaching, you know, the second coming of Jesus Christ. And we don't know when, but it is closer. It's been coming since before this was written, but we're closer now than ever before. So God wants us together. He wants us stirring each other up, not just for the sake of being stirred up and feeling good, but stirring, us, stirring each other up for good works. So why would he allow the church to be closed down? You know, I never thought I, I would see a time like this where, where we can't get together and go to church. Before every great thing, when we, even when we look in the Bible, before great things happen, there, there's always been a time of testing, a time of trial. This is a great time, like Paul told the church in Corinth, to examine yourself. Is Jesus really in you or are you just coming to church. So test yourselves, he says. A test shows who we really are and where we need to grow. How is not having church affecting your walk with Jesus? You know, our weaknesses will be exposed. And, and if we acknowledge those weaknesses and, and we truly seek God and, and seek his help in those weaknesses, well, they will be strengthened and, and we'll be better off in the end. We'll be better for it. We'll be stronger. We'll be more effective for the true ministry of the church. And the true ministry of the church is what? It's, it's really to be a shining light in, the, in this world, this world that needs the church to shine as a bright light and to be effective in, in, in re reaching people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we're going to look at some examples in the Bible this week We're gonna of how Great things happened after a time of testing. This week we'll look in the Old Testament, and, and next week we'll, we'll bring this subject back, and we'll look in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, in the book of Psalms, the psalmist says this in 139, verse 23, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties, and see if there's any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. It is God who searches the heart. And so uh, I, too, had no thought that uh, we would not be able to have church except maybe uh, we become a, a country that was against Christianity. Didn't expect it to happen because of a, of a virus. But uh, this truly is a time of testing for us. And, uh, you know, now we're, we're at home. In this time with me and Gail, to me, there's been more things tested or tried that hasn't even happened in a long time because we've been busy, we've been doing everything, now we're kind of shut down. And, and so uh, there's other things that God's looking at and it, it does test your heart and you say, all right, how am I gonna handle that? Or how do I take this time that we're uh, more in the house and let God do a work in me? So it has been a, a challenging time, but he is a God who tests and he searches hearts and any leader of God has had a testing happen to them. And Abraham was no different at the birth of, of Israel. Um, in Genesis chapter 12, it says this, Now the Lord has said to Abram, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, and, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So here we have God 
asking for something to happen, for Abraham to obey him and come out of his country. But there's a blessing tied to it that, that everybody, the whole world is going to be blessed if he will obey. And he has to pass this test. Uh, if he doesn't, then, then these things aren't, aren't going to be taking place. So even though uh, God is, is wonderful, yet when he chooses people, there's a testing to prove that they are the leader God sees in them. It happens again with Abraham when it comes to his promised son Isaac when God asked for him to be a sacrifice. And so in willingness of this test, he takes him to the very place God told him to. And in uh, Genesis twenty two eleven, 11, it says this as he's about ready to actually sacrifice his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad and, and do, or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And this is God saying, now I know. Well, you would think God already does know, and he does. He knows all things. But now it's not just God known, it's proven to the very individual themselves. When God tests us, and, and we advance to something, we get the experience ourselves. You know, God says it now, I see it now, I know because it's been dis displayed in the earth that you have been tested and you passed the test. And God wants to do that with all of us. He wants to, us to pass the test. And uh, so he, Abraham passed that wonderful test and then he gives him another promise in verse 15. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, that in blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sands which are on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies, and in your seed all the nations of the earth earth shall be blessed. Why? Because you have obeyed my voice. So he's talking about Jesus coming. He's talking about a Savior who will die for the whole world. <laughs> this is the wonderful thing that when Abraham passed his test, he became not only the father of Israel, he became the father of the faithful. He passed the test and Jesus is now on the way and the whole world is going to be blessed. Testing happens all the time. It happens in everybody's life. God's always searching the heart, but not just searching it. He is letting it be revealed who we are. I really believe when we come to Judgment Day, it's going to be obvious what's happening because we will know we were tested and, and it proved out one way or the other who we were and whose we are. God allows us to be seen that we are His. It's why he identifies his own people by what they do. Even though we know we're saved by grace, I don't earn heaven, but yet the proof of my relationship with him is going to be tested and revealed. And if, we're, if we come short, we're supposed to repent. If we don't look like the Lord, we're supposed to conform. So the testing reveals a lot of things in us. In Deuteronomy, uh, it speaks about the nation of Israel and what God was doing there. Listen to this in Deuteronomy 8, verse 2. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you. So the wilderness was not uh, places that maybe somebody would volunteer to be in, but yet because they are there, God is revealing, showing, and testing them of who they really are and to know what was in your heart. So he humbled them and tested them to see and to reveal what was truly in their heart. How often when we are squeezed, like the, like, you know, you don't know what's in a sponge till you squeeze it. And then if it's clean, it looks great. If it's dirty, it all comes out when it's squeezed. When God tests us, we, we get to know within our own heart what's in there to our shock or even to our surprise. 
David said, search my heart to see if there's any wicked way in me. And that's exactly what God wants to do. He wants to show you what's wrong, and he desires to see a heart of repentance. You know, during this time, there's times where I go, wow, uh, I need to uh, restore that trait in me or that habit uh, because in our busyness, maybe some things uh, got hidden away. I was doing certain things for certain reasons. But in this new situation, God reveals some weaknesses in me, reveals some weaknesses in relationships. Uh, And and so it's awesome that even in a restrictive time, we're growing, we're learning things about God. I'm sure that's happened with you too, Pastor Jim, and, uh, and with our families. And it says, it continues on in, in verse 3, that he tested us to know what was in our hearts, whether we would keep his commandments or not. And then verse 3, so he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and then he fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. I I just thought that is such an interesting scripture because the purpose of God in any test, in any situation, you know, God has allowed us to be in this situation with this virus. Leaders were moved, our president, our Senators, representatives, our vice president, our governor, we're all moved to make certain decisions. You may agree with them or you may not agree with them, but yet in the midst of it, God is causing one thing to happen. Can he draw us closer to himself? And I think that's awesome. He wanted us to know it's not just about the financial health of the United States. It's, just, it's not just about that we're the breadbasket of the world. It's not about all those things. Ultimately, God wants us to know that we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of his mouth. We live by a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so he has this wonderful place of testing, this wonderful, uh, and they might not call it wonderful, but for God it is wonderful because it reveals to his people where they really stand with God. And in this testing for us, it really reveals where I'm at, where you're at, where our congregations are at, all for the purpose of good, all for the purpose of good. And Jesus quoted that scripture there in Deuteronomy and Matthew 4, 4. We hear him say, man shall not live by bread alone. And where was he? He, he was in the wilderness. Yeah, he was, he, he was he in was, his testing. Yeah. He, was being, he was being tested and, and tried and, and, pre- and he was being prepared for ministry, being prepared for, for what was to come. And, and he had to go through that time of, of testing first. I remember my first wilderness experience. Um, it came within the first three or four years uh, of my becoming a Christian. And I was in that, that first love stage where, you know, God, I just was growing and learning and and I just felt the presence of God in my life. I went from not believing in God at all to to this the spirit of God coming in and 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 really taking you know place settling into dwelling in in my heart and like I said last week I would go and and sit and open my Bible and God would minister to me. I I knew every time I sat there and opened my Bible that that something was going to jump out at me, that there would be something to highlight, a note to write, that something that God would reveal to me. And this took place for a couple of years and and then I realized I was in a time where I'm reading and I'm not hearing anything. And 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 I don't know how long, but it took for me to realize that. But I'm like, boy, I really haven't highlighted anything. I haven't, nothing's jumped out at me in a while. And I was in the Old Testament at the time. And I, I said, well, well, maybe it's because I'm reading the Old Testament <laughs> that, that maybe I need to get back to the New Testament. But I was determined to read the Old Testament. I'm, I'm going to read it. So I, so I kept really trudging along. And this went on, I don't know how long, I would say several months of, I felt like, like God wasn't there, like he wasn't speaking to me anymore. And I didn't have that, that feeling of the presence of God that I had in, that, in that, the early stages of my relationship with him. And um, it really bothered me, it did trouble me. And I prayed about it and I talked to people about it and, and nobody really had an answer for me. And um, one day, 
just reading like I was accustomed to, doing my devotion. I'm reading through Second Chronicles, and I come to chapter 32, reading about Hezekiah, and I, I hit verse 31, and it says, God withdrew from him, from Hezekiah, in order to test him, that he might know all that was in his heart. And I read that, and it was the first time in months that it jumped off the page and into my heart, and I knew. And, and it's one of those memories, this was a long time ago, probably over 25 years ago, I could, one of those memories that are just kind of frozen in time where I could still picture looking at you know, the Bible, I could still picture the, the room and, and even the lighting and, and my wife Joyce in the kitchen. And I remember yelling something to her like, like I got it. <laughs> you know, I'm just so excited that, that God spoke to me and, and I knew what was going on. He was testing me. He told me I, I was putting you through a test. And, and I learned so much from that test. I learned that, that yes, I, I don't, my faith isn't rooted in, in the feeling, that, that first love feeling. And what it really taught me, looking back on that time, it was that that was a turning point. That was a turning point in my, in my faith walk with Jesus that I knew, I knew that there was no going back. I made it through that first test, and this is my life now. This would be my life forever. God's good, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. And from that moment on, my, my relationship changed with God. It, it, it reached a new level of maturity, uh, of responsibility, of accountability. But I was, I was set. I, was, I would never be going back. And, and I began to, he began to minister and teach me in different ways, more mature ways. He began to take my, my, my new faith and, and, and it would begin to grow and I would be given more responsibilities within the church and, and, and just doing things for the Lord. And, and I'm so thankful as I look back. You know, I did not enjoy that s separation I felt from God during that time. But by remaining faithful, I really saw what was in my heart and that, no, my faith wasn't based on that feeling that I had. As much as I love that feeling, but it was based on, on the Word of God, my love for God, whether I feel Him or not. And in this time, you know, where we don't have the fellowship that, that we've come to love and, and, and depend on. We don't have the, you know, the, the fellowship of each other, encouraging each other, lifting each other up. And you know, the presence that we experience in worshiping together, the presence of God, you know, what do we do? You know, when we get through this and we look back, we can see this as a time of growth, a time of that we'll look back and say, yeah, I made it through that. I came out on the other side and I'm stronger, I'm better, and, and God will, can now use us in greater ways. We're a more mature church. We're, more, we're a stronger, more effective church. Amen. Yeah, and I believe that we're going to come back and we're going to enjoy it, but we're going to be a different church. Yeah. And I think we're going to be a stronger, better, greater, yeah. because God's tested us, yeah. because things have happened. And I believe things are happening for you out there that God is working in and, and doing. You know, I, I remember that I was growing in the Lord and I came to the place of the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit where I read in the Bible, uh, how much more will the Father give the Holy Spirit to his children that ask? And I think I was about 19 years old at, at that time and... And when I read it, I go, well, that's me. I'm his child. I, I received him. I've been moving in this relationship with God, but I'd never asked for the Holy Spirit. So right there in, in my bed at that moment, I just said, Father, give me the Holy Spirit. In my heart, I was saying, this is, a, I am your child, and you said to ask, so, so I asked. I didn't know anything was supposed to happen. I didn't know anybody believed that certain things were supposed to happen a certain way. Like some, some of our brothers and sisters say, well, if you get the Holy Spirit, you're gonna, you, you won't have it until you speak in tongues. You won't have whatever. I didn't know any of those things. I just read the scripture where you ask. So I ask. And uh, in my life, just things started happening. It's like I was learning more from the Word. I would have moments that... Uh, I would say what the word talks about, a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge, that I would suddenly know things about my friends that 
that were needs or something and God would allow me to speak it, say it, and they would just be moved into the things of God. And sometimes it'd be like, like how did you know that? And I go, I don't know how I knew that. But I knew it was these, these gifts that were happening and I hadn't come upon tongues. That hadn't happened in my life. As a matter of fact, as I was reading the Bible and learning all these things, I thought, okay, well, it says uh, a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom is a, uh, uh, like a greater thing or, or something you, you look for more than, than tongues. And so I equated like, okay, tongues is like this littlest gift. And so I was fine with God doing these things and learning this uh, about God. But it, now comes the test. Uh, God wants you to learn. God wants to teach you. And are you willing to move and, and respond? Will you move in obedience when he shows you something or will you resist? And so I was going about my life and suddenly it just seemed like I was in a desert. You know, think about this Deuteronomy. I put you in a desert to test you, to humble you. to show. Well, I felt like suddenly I was, had been growing and suddenly I was in this spiritual desert where not much was happening at all. And it just seemed like it was so dry. And I remember I was at this one point in place and I was praying and I was saying, Lord, what's, uh, what's happening? What is going on? And I heard a response. I heard inside my spirit, the Lord say this, why do you want my hundred dollar bill and you reject my dollar bill? And I don't know how you are uh, uh, when God speaks to you, but when he speaks to me, you know, it's like you know what he means. You know what he was trying to say. Instantly, I knew what he was trying to say. What, what was it that I was saying to God I want was like those greater gifts, those greater things. Like, yes, Lord, I'm open to for you to give me a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge or a, a, a moment of discernment, uh, di different of those gifts. But the one I was opposed to and had developed and said, that, that seems kind of weird to me. I'm, I don't want that one was the gift of, of tongues. And God was telling me, you, you've said you wanted my greater gift, the $100 bill, but you told me you don't want and you reject my dollar bill. And for the, here's what I heard. Immediately, I found out that everything's the same. It truly is. The, the Bible says these gifts are there as the Spirit wills because it's all of God. It's like, it's all God's money. His dollar bill, his hundred dollar bill, it's all God. You know, if you were dying of thirst in a, in a hot desert and suddenly you come upon a soda machine that only takes dollar bills, then do you, do you want God's $100 bill or do you want his dollar bill? And, you would want, and, and which one's the most valuable at that moment? The, the dollar bill is. And so in one word from God, I was convicted that I had separated God's gifts by value and had made my heart only want the highest and not the least. And suddenly I realized they're all God's and they're all necessary and, and God can use them whenever he wants. And it's not me to say to God, give me your $100 bill, your great gifts, and hold back your minor gifts because that's a little weird to me. And it struck my heart and now here's the moment. Am I going to grow? Am I going to step to a new place with God or am I going to still say, it's weird, I don't want to tell anybody about tongues. I don't want any of that. But no, because God spoke and my heart was now being tested. I went right into my bedroom. I remember I got down and I just repented to God. I said, God, I, I am sorry that I took who you are and what the Holy Spirit does. And I said yes to some things and no to other things. I said, whatever you want to do with me, Lord, whatever you want to do with me. So this wasn't, to me, it was not a test of, are you going to be doing words of wisdom? Are you going to be speaking in tongues? It was a test of, are you going to be willing to let God do whatever he wants to do? And if so, and if you pass that test, then to whom honors the little things he has, then God will give more things. And because I passed that test, I really believe at that moment that uh, God was 
now giving an open door that yes, you can be a leader of, of greater things because you're willing to humble yourself and say, I'm wrong and all that you have, I'm open to. To me, that was a moment of testing in my life that was so important and I had to pass that test to even come close to where I am today. And I can look back at my life like you can and see those moments that God was revealing who we are, either our weaknesses or even our strengths, that we could get to this place in his will. And, you know, Joseph in the Old Testament, because we're talking about Old Testament, is a picture of that same thing, even though it doesn't really directly come out in the scriptures about that. Yet, yet he was tested. Yeah, and God had a plan for Joseph, um, just like he had a plan for you. He had a purpose that he wanted him to accomplish. And, and like yourself, God, he had to bring you through tests to, to raise Pastor Rick up to the man who would be able to minister you know, throughout Sussex County. And, and I think of the impact you've had on, on the lives of the people that attended this church and all the souls that have been saved. And it, it took a time of testing and, and maturing for you to become, become that man. And, and like with Joseph, you know, Joseph got was a good, good man, and, and his character was proven, as we'll see in the scriptures, but he was comfortable. You know, he was comfortable hanging out with his dad, and we see his brothers are out in the field working, and Joseph's hanging out. His dad is giving him gifts, Jacob, and, and for Joseph to become the man he needed to be, well, God had to pull him out of that comfort zone, and I think of the church much the same way. We get so comfortable in the church that sometimes God just has to pull us out and, and, and stretch us a little bit. I'm always encouraging my church to, to step outside the walls of the church where, where life is really happening and, and allow yourself to be stretched and tested. Well, Joseph was stretched, and, and his brother saw him come in one day, and they devised a plan against him, and they threw him in a pit. <laughs> To, to kill him. And, and that was a difficult time. We see in the Bible how Joseph pleaded with his brothers to get him out, but, but they left him there. And what they did do is they sold him. So he cut, they pull him out of the pit, they sell him into slavery. Now he's a slave in Egypt where he would go through even more test, testing. First one would be, you know, he would be tempted by Potiphar's wife and, and, and he would pass that test only to be wrongly accused by Potiphar and and thrown into you know into prison, where again he would be tested, and and where the the promises that were made to get him out of prison would be would be taken away, and he would remain in prison. So God would use all of these things to test Joseph's faithfulness and and his resolve. And in and in none of these did he blame God or did he curse God, but he remained faithful. And and through that, God would raise him. He would give him gifts and and raise him to place a place of, of status in Egypt and all the way to second in command right under Pharaoh. Now the Joseph that was given that coat by his father, we could we see by you know his interpretation of the dream would not have been ready for such a position because it, it would have really gone to his head and and how would he he have treated his brothers when they came but there would we know there was a famine and and Joseph God gave Joseph wisdom to to distribute and to you know to store up and then distribute the grain and, and all of that and then an, another test came when his brothers came for food how would he react to his brothers you know would he treat them with bitterness or would he treat them with love well, the old Joseph, we don't know, but the new Joseph, the tried and tested, the proven Joseph, treated him with love. He was ready to, to, to minister and to love his brothers and to, and to love his father back, and, and it, it made all the difference in the world. We are a church today because the nation of Israel was preserved through a man like Joseph, a man who was tried and tested and, 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 and who didn't react in, in bitterness but reacted in love, much like the church should do today as we come out of this you know, this trial, we should be a church that, that loves, you know, I know we don't all agree with the way things are even being handled, you know, politically and everything else, but regardless, you know, we come out with love. We love those, you know, whether they love us or not, whether we think they've handled this right or correctly or not, we, we continue to love and, and we let our light shine. And in the end, you know, when Joseph's brothers were afraid, what is, how was he going to react? What did he say in Genesis 45, 5? But now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. God 
destined the church to preserve life, life with him. That's our job. That's the purpose of the church is to preserve life. Mm -hmm. So now we are in a moment of testing. Yeah. There's no, no question about it. I, I really think testing's happening all the time, but it's more obvious at, at other times. Joseph was had a moment. Was he going to participate and take in the the temptation of the flesh with Potiphar's wife? And I think now that we have free time and, and things like that on our hands, the question is, are we being tempted or tested to see will we go for the things of God or will we go for things of the flesh? So we have an opportunity like Joseph to be able to stand and say, uh, here's what I know in my heart, I will not sin against God. Amen. We have a, a, an opportunity to do that here today. And, and then he was put in prison wrongfully. Uh, <laughs> didn't deserve to. Well, most of us aren't sick yet we're restrained. We don't have the virus, yet I can't go anywhere and I can't do the things I normally would. We can rebel, we can be angry, we can, we can come against our governmental leaders, uh, or we can walk in a godly way that would be God-pleasing uh, and in the end grow from this. Uh, Joseph decided he did not rebel against his captors and his uh, the prison guards, he, he worked with them. And in the end, he, they let him run the prison. <laughs> I mean, so even being restrained, he was blessed by God because he didn't rebel and get into a rebellious attitude. Um, he moved into a way that was pleasing to God. And, and then that, that last one, he had an opportunity to stay bitter, you know, and, and be upset at his brothers? And, and was he going to pass the test of love? And you, and you said he did. And, and I don't know what it is for you. You know, some of us were getting to be a, a little bit of a mess restrained in our houses. And maybe people don't even like being with us now. And, and we could blame it on the restraints and the, and the virus. But the reality is maybe we're getting squeezed and maybe it's revealing what's inside of us. And we, we need to work on ourselves and to let God continue con to conform us that we can look Christ-like even under pressure. Uh, I don't know what you're going through today and what's all happening out there, but uh, we need to take this moment and let God have it. We need to, to, to let Him have His way in, in our life and not be a, a stick in the mud or a problem to Him, but that He can truly form us and conform us to his will and to our future, to what it is. If you see things in you that don't look Christ-like and it's being revealed, well, don't, don't stay stubborn. Humble yourself before him. Thank God that it got shown to you and repent of it and, and let God conform you out of that. For some of us, we are being blessed by moving during this time and, and doing some God things and spirit-led things, and we're being blessed because of it. And the end result, I believe, is going to be far more, more positive. And then somebody out there, you might not know Jesus. Maybe it's simply because of what's going on that you've even searched the Internet and maybe you, you found us today. Uh, maybe you saw us on WBOC and you've checked us out this week. But God had a plan and a purpose for that, to touch your heart, to touch your life, to change your eternity. I just want to have a prayer with you, and, and, and if you don't know Jesus, re receive him into your life. Thank him that, that he died for you on a cross for your sins, that you can now have a relationship with the living God, and be open to it. Uh, let yourself be open to, to God being who he is, Lord and Savior of the world. And uh, if you are a believer, then be open even more to let God conform you this week to his plan, to his purpose, to his will. We say here, you've got seven days. And what we mean is we talk about the gospel for just an hour or two and we celebrate, we sing songs, but then we've got that whole week to display what God is really doing. And so I pray you take your seven days and use them wisely this week. And in the midst of our whole nation's trial, that in the end we come out of it stronger, uh, advanced in the things of God, 
and that we will be blessed in our relationship with him. Will you pray with me? Lord, I do thank you for everybody who's listening to this program. And for those that don't know you, Lord, I pray they will receive you today. They will accept your work on the cross, knowing that you love them enough to die for them and, and, and that they receive you as Lord and Savior of their life. And bless them, encourage them, help them, especially when this is over, that they find a good church to plant themselves into. And Lord, for... for uh, the people of Crossroad and, and your saints that already know you, we pray for their encouragement, their strengthening, and Lord, that you truly can conform them at this time and that uh, you will draw each one of us closer to you. And when we come back together finally, whenever that's going to be, that uh, it, it will be such a rejoicing yeah. and that we will literally see the advancement of what you have done with your family of God and with the family here at Crossroad. Lord, we lift up our president, our senators, our representatives, our governor, and, and Lord, that you would be guiding it and, and helping them, blessing them. And Lord, even though many things are strange now, they're different than they were, we still pray that your hand will be on this nation, that your blessing will be on your people, and you will bring many hearts uh, to yourself all around the world giving you honor and glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Have a blessed week this week. And uh, remember, you got seven days. What are you going to do with it? Let's honor God with all of our heart. Hi, Crossroad. Just want to invite you to a Bible study that will be taking place this Wednesday, April 22nd, 7 o'clock. It will be on the website. There will be a link for you to click so you can watch it. There might be, there'll be a place for you to make comments if you like. But hope to see you then.